In this video, I'm going to demonstrate to you how to use the option group control in an access application. Uh, the option group control can be found under toolbox here. And this is the icon for it, the XYZ icon, um, option group. Click on it, and you basically plop it onto your, uh, your form. Now, when you plop it onto your form, the option group wizard comes up. The first thing it's going to ask you is to uh, ask you to list your options, basically. So I'm going to list a couple options. Apple, orange, banana, and grape. Okay. Hit next, and it's going to ask you what your default choice is. If I say yes, I want to have a default choice, and that default choice is Apple, what that means is that every time the form opens up, Apple will automatically be selected. If I hit no default choice, that means no uh, value will be selected automatically. I'm going to hit next. I'm going to ha actually hit no default choice and hit next. And then this is where it asks you to assign a value to each one. Now, there's absolutely no reason for you to kind of change these values. These values are numer numerical values that kind of go in order. Uh, you can change them if you'd like to, but I don't ever see any reason to, so I usually leave them the same. This basically means that if Apple is selected, the value that comes out of this option group will be value 1. If orange is selected, the value that comes out of the option group will be val value 2, so on. Hit next, and this is kind of cosmetic uh, preferences. You can either have your option group show check boxes, toggle buttons, or... Um, option buttons. I like the radio buttons here, so I usually keep this here. And again, the style, you can flat, sunken, whatever. So I usually just leave this the way it is. Hit next, and this is where you can actually assign a option caption for it. Uh, I'll say fruits here. And hit finish. So now our option group is created. Now what do we do with this? Well, there's a couple things you have to do first in order to uh, ensure that you can write some code against it. Uh, right click on the option group, go to properties, and go to the name. And make sure that you have a name here that either A, you can remember, or B, that that, um, that you know what it is, actually. Uh, so I'm going to say, I'm going to rename this Q option. Okay. Now this is the name that, it's, that you're going to use in code to refer back to this particular option group, so Q option. All right, that's actually it. Now, the gist of an option group, again, is when you select a particular option, that option group returns a value. And you can actually see what value these particular options are by clicking on the value and going to properties of that value. And see, this is Apple is value 1. This particular value is value 2. This particular value is value 3. And that's value 4. Now we can go ahead and do something with this. And usually, uh, you do something with it based on some event. And I'm going to go ahead and trigger that event with a command button. So let's say my option. OK. So let's go ahead and put an event here on the my option. On. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put in a select case statement. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with the select case statement, I actually have a video on the website under the VBA portion of the tutorials that actually explain what the select case statement does. But just as a kind of a, a quick summary, a select case statement determines which of the cases that you give access is actually true and does something based on that case. In our particular situation, we're going to say select case me q option value so we're going to do something based on the value of q option so we're going to say case is equal one we're going to say message box apple now this particular action can be anything it doesn't have to be fire a message box. It can be open a query, open a report, do this particular action, do that particular action. Um, so this is just a basic example. Case is equal to, and then message box orange. So I've gone ahead and put in case equals 3 and case equals 4 already. So 
I've got those message boxes in. And so what is this doing? This is telling us that uh, when we press that particular command button, we're going to go ahead and evaluate the value of the Q option and select which case is true and then do the action under that case. And again, this action doesn't have to be a message box. Uh, it can be opening a report, opening a query, uh, running some sort of process, et cetera, et cetera. So let's go ahead and do one last thing. I'm going to make sure that we end the select here. And so that's good. Let's go ahead and test this thing out. All right, let's select orange. Orange was selected. Let's select banana. Banana was selected. So it tells us which one has been selected. All right, a couple things. Notice when I open the form, these are grayed out. Well, it's not very attractive and it's not very clear on what's happening here. Uh, so you can actually resolve this issue by doing a quick change to the properties of these particular radio buttons. Go ahead and click on the option group, right click, go to properties, default value, and default value is false. Okay, so now when I open up my form, go ahead and save it first. Now they're all white. It's not, now it's clear that you have to select a particular option. Now what happens if you forgot a particular option and you want to add another option here? Well, that's easy to do. All you have to do is click on one of these radio buttons here, hit copy, and then click on the whole option group, right click and hit paste. That particular option, a new option actually, kind of comes into this option group. Now you have to watch it because if you right click on here and go to properties, this option value is 4. Well, the option above it is 4. Not only did it copy the uh, radio button, but it actually copied the properties of that radio button. So this won't do. It has to be unique options or op unique option values. So apple is 1, orange is 2, banana is 3, grape is 4, and then this one is going to have to be 5. That way our, our particular option group won't fail. Now we can change the caption here. Grapefruit. Okay, so now we just basically added a new option. So we'll have to go in here to our select case statement and add a case for that particular new option. So we'll copy this. Case equals five. We'll say grapefruit. That's it. So let's go ahead and test this out. Grapefruit. Grapefruit. And that's basically the gist of how an option group works. And this is a very basic example. You can actually use an option group to do a lot of fancy things. You can actually use it to select whether you want to work online or offline. You can use an option group to uh, select particular reports that you want to run, things like this. So go ahead and play with option groups a little bit and uh, try to find something that you can do in your applications with an option group.